So for the calculation of level R, what I have done is I picked out a number of uh, number of figures from the textbook so that I can illustrate lever arm. There's quite a few of them, and I think I can go through all of them. It's not uh, very long to go over them, so uh, might as well. So um, this is the this first figure is what to in the textbook to introduce uh, introduce torque, and I guess the place I should start from is um, sort of the locating lever arm in the formula for torque. So this is what you have seen as the formula for torque. So in the, so in the textbook and elsewhere, you see the definition of torque as um, displacement R cross product with the force vector. And we've talked about this cross product, and um, and so uh, this is the full description of torque, especially in this uh, vector sense. And you've seen before exam to how this uh, vector property of torque is important in explaining something like a precession. Now, most of the time when we deal with the torque, we don't need to deal with the full three-dimensional vector aspect. Really what we are more interested in is the, is the magnitude of torque. And formula for that becomes a little bit simpler. It's uh, uh, the magnitude of the displacement, or just the distance, times the magnitude of the force, times sine theta. So um, you could take the description of torque as this. Then the question I want to address is, uh, where in this formula do you locate the lever arm? And for that, I would like to rewrite this, rewrite this formula in two different ways. I guess one of the ways I actually don't need to do any rewriting, I can just put this parenthesis here to make the um, or, uh, organ, uh, to make the grouping clear. The rewriting I might have to do is to move this sine theta around a little bit to say uh, R sine theta times F. And to make the grouping clear, I might put parenthesis around our sine theta. And this is a two different ways of writing this one and the same formula. And in each of these ways, the quantity that I put under the parenthesis, you can give that a meaning. So um, just to uh, uh, avoid any confusion, this theta, it refers to the angle between the the displacement vector and the force vector. So to point, that, point out the theta in these figures here, um, in example A, so this is the, the, the direction for force. So the theta would be this angle here. This would be theta. Uh, B, uh, A, B, C, they are all the same. Uh, theta would be this angle here because I'm imagining this being the F and this being R. So with the, these two vectors, uh, what we define as theta is the angle between these two vectors. And you can see this here. Um, here's F. And I guess uh, something that's a little bit confusing at times is, so if uh, this is R, then it's natural to say, all right, so putting those two vectors at the same origin, Oh, why am I going um, this is my R vector, then shouldn't this be theta? Um, you can, well, uh, mathematically, there's no a big distinction between the two. Since whether you label this acute angle as theta or this obtuse angle as theta, the way we are using this angle is as a sine of theta and um, sine of, it comes down to sine of theta is equal to sine of 
180 degree minus data. So, um, so whether you identify identify theta as this obtuse angle, which uh, from my view is the correct <laughs> identification for theta, or whether you use this angle theta, it, they both end up giving you the same answer. So with that identification of theta, what I want to say is that this quantity here, you can identify this as the perpendicular component of displacement. In fact, that is exactly what is done here. So, and this is what we are calling lever arm. And this is the more useful um, way to calculate torque. That's okay. Uh, this is the way to calculate torque that is more useful in more situations. Uh, this is a perfectly valid way to do it. And this uh, particular expression would represent the uh, perpendicular component of the force. So when you are calculating torque, you could do it as a distance times the perpendicular component of the torque, or you could do it instead as force times the perpendicular component of displacement. And both are valid, both give you the same answer. Um, but graphically, you will find that there are more situations where lever arm gives a more intuitive answer. Um, so, so yeah, um, let me uh, let me describe and demonstrate the procedure for identifying lever arm in a figure um, in the examples below. I I could use this figure here to here to explain the procedure, but um, well, should I? Yeah, I think I should. So let me do that. Let me use this figure D to explain the procedure for uh, finding lever arm in the figure. So, so this is the procedure. What you are, so we, I described the lever arm as the perpendicular distance. So what the procedure is designed to do, designed to do is find that perpendicular distance. So uh, when we say perpendicular distance, this limit distance between what and what. <laughs> and what I would say is it's the distance between your center of rotation, which uh, will either be obvious as what that is or, um, or you define it yourself. Here, the hinge is a natural choice for the center of rotation. So it's the distance between the center of rotation and what I like to call line of force. Um, I think a more common phrase for this is line of force or line of action. I, I think I still prefer line of force because action, such an ambiguous term in physics. <laughs> I don't like using the word action. So I'm just gonna call it line of force. But whatever the word you use, it's the line that you associate with the force that whose torque that you're trying to calculate. Um, and when you're drawing free body diagram for rigid body motion, you have to be careful at which point of the rigid body the force is acting. So the force is acting on this point. Uh, if I'm drawing a proper free body diagram, I would probably label it like this with a force appearing to come from the point where you are applying it. And you're trying to find the distance between this point and the line of force. So this is where you have to be careful. Um, so I am not talking about this distance here because that distance would be just the R and I'm not looking for that. I'm looking for uh, something that's uh, almost like in the, I don't know if you remember learning this in geometry, in geometry, you talk about a distance between a line, a geometric object line, and a point. And when you want to measure the distance, you measure the distance using a perpendicular line segment or segment that's perpendicular to the line. So that's what we are going to do here. This force, unfortunately, is only a segment. So we need to do first, as a matter of procedure, extend this segment into a line that goes infinitely in either direction. 
and find the perpendicular segment that drops down from the point onto that, onto that line of force. And this is the lever arm. So let me illustrate this procedure with a few more figures because you know practice makes perfect and um, you, it, 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 there's a benefit to seeing this uh, procedure in multiple contexts in multiple different figures. So I have uh, some figures here just copied out of examples in the textbook. So let me just go through this and illustrate my procedure here for finding the lever arm. So here, uh, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to start by extending this force, uh, force vector into a line. So um, what's important here is that the line goes through the point at which the force is acting and it's going in the same, uh, or it has the same orientation as the force. Then looking at here, this is the axis of rotation. This is the perpendicular segment. And I would call this the lever arm um, or perpendicular distance uh, from the axis of rotation to the, uh, the line of force. All right, let's uh, keep going through a few more examples. Now, an example like this one is where it might feel more natural to use the other description of uh, other description of torque. Just to you know spell it out, let me say that. So, the other description of torque was the distance times the perpendicular component of force. And here, it's very natural to do that. It's very natural to take this force, uh, break it up into two components one that's a perpendicular to R and one that's going to become, going to be parallel to R. So this is the, the parallel component. This is the perpendicular component and take this to calculate the torque. So the component that contributes to torque would look like this. It's very natural to do that and nothing wrong with that if you do that. Uh, so this is probably one of those uh, situations where you would just uh, use this formula and not bother finding lever arm. Uh, but you know, I could ask you, find the lever arm. And if I were to do that, then this is how you would do it. Let me uh, re-demonstrate the procedure. You first start by extending the force vector into a line. So let me try to do that as, as straightly as I, as I can. So here's an extension of that force vector into a line. And what we do is, all right, here's the point, the axis of rotation, and you drop down perpendicular uh, segment. And uh, this perpendicular segment is my lever arm. And you can see that uh, it is the same angle theta that you are dealing with. So this is the same angle theta that you had before and this perpendicular segment is R sine 30 degrees. Um, so in, in the final answer, whether you use perpendicular component of R or the perpendicular component of uh, F1, it doesn't change your final answer. What it does change is uh, how, you, how you represent it on a figure. All right. Uh, Let's see, I think I have a few more examples. Oh, yeah. Uh, so these are, I think the examples up to this were from chapter 10, back when we were doing rigid body motion. And these examples are now from chapter 12. And, you know, they don't all have to be complicated. Here is a very simple example where basically my lever arm is, uh, well, what you see here, this is the lever arm for W. This is the lever arm for W2. This is the lever arm for W3. And, you know, I, you do want to kind of account for the sense of rotation separately for each one. Um, but, you know, they, they are all 90 degrees here. They don't have to be very complicated. The lever arm is the actual displacement. Um, so um, now, the wonderful thing about static equilibrium situations we cover in chapter 12 is that sometimes they can get very complicated. So this is one, one of those examples. 
it's an um, example of a biomechanical motion that is uh, relatively simple to describe. You're describing a, a motion where someone's lifting a, lifting a ball, and, but there's a lot of force involved here. There's a force that's acting on the joint, uh, which provides a net force, but no net torque. There's a force acting on this point of attachment by the muscle, which provides net force and torque. There's a force, um, I guess here, the ball is being pulled down by gravity. And when you look at the force on the hand, the hand is being pushed down through the normal force. So it's a very complicated picture. When you look at the free body diagram that's in the um, that's in that's in the example that reflects that it's uh, showing you the diagram with three forces in um, three forces at three locations, and you can see here that your textbook has taken the other option. It has taken the option to calculate the torque as the displacement times the perpendicular component of the force because it chose the axis along the direction of displacement and broke all the forces down into components that's parallel and components that are perpendicular. So ha after having done all this work, it's probably simplest to use this as the perpendicular component of the force and use, um, and, you know, um, use that to uh, help you finish the calculation. <laughs> That's perfectly valid. So let me use this uh, example to illustrate if you are going the other way, instead of using the perpendicular component of force, if you are instead using the perpendicular component of the displacement, that is the lever arm, how you would have done this analysis differently. Um, for one, I don't know if I can hide them. Um, okay, so for one, you wouldn't be doing any of this breaking down forces into components. So let me get rid of these very confusing arrows. And you do deal with the forces one whole vector. You have, um, so for example, um, you have the one whole vector here. Uh, oh, but that particular force is going to result in zero torque, so <laughs> let me not deal with that. Let me deal instead with uh, this uh, uh, kind of a tension force from the muscle. So what you do, do, this is the procedure. You extend this force into a line so that you have a, a graphical representation of the line of force. And what you do? is you drop down a perpendicular segment from the center of rotation onto that line. So this is what you would say the lever arm for tension force T. Okay, uh, let's continue. So I have this uh, uh, W or this is, um, this is the kind of the weight of the ball um, so to find the torque due to this force, I do the same thing, extend this force into a line for line of force. And then you drop down a perpendicular segment from the center of rotation all the way down to that line. And this entire distance here is the perpendicular component of the, uh, um, perpendicular component of the displacement to the point at which the, the weight force or something related to that is acting. Good. I think I have one more example remaining. Oh, actually two. I have one more example from chapter 12 here. This one, I think you've actually seen me do some work with it uh, in one of the recorded videos that oh, okay, I guess I posted today, so maybe you haven't seen it yet. So when you analyze this ladder on wall situation, this is the free body diagram you end up drawing. And the process for drawing this is very interesting. Um, I encourage you to watch the lecture video where I do the ladder on wall or carpenter on ladder analysis. 
So here, I can use the procedure I described to calculate the torque due to each one of these four forces. Now, um, even though I can do it for all four forces, let me just uh, stop and recognize that the normal force and the friction force here, they are both going to result in torque of zero because they are right on the point of rotate, acting right on the point of rotation. So the lever arm for both either of them is going to be zero. So, all right, let's not waste too much time there. So let's look at instead the lever arm for W or the weight of the ladder. So same procedure. I start by extending this force into a line. Then starting from this point of rotation here, I find a perpendicular segment that drops down to that line. This is the perpendicular segment. And the length of this segment is the lever arm for the weight force. Good. Now, what makes things interesting here is that this normal force from the wall is going in a different direction because it's normal force from a vertical wall. So, um, but the procedure remains the same. I start by extending this force into a line. So here that line looks horizontal because it's going in the same direction that the force is. And starting from this point here, I drop a perpendicular segment down to this line. So when I drop that, that perpendicular segment, it has to look this way. So this is the lever arm for the, um, for the normal force. Um, normal force, I guess I'll, I would call it F, normal force F. And you can see that uh, it, using this angle beta between the uh, force and the displacement that this, this uh, lever arm is given by the formula you would expect, R sine beta times F. Um, but what this uh, method of identifying lever arm graphically is useful is when uh, you're trying to develop some intuition for a situation. Uh, I think I have just one more figure of oh, this one. Uh, I forget if this comes from chapter 10 or 12, um, but um, I guess uh, here it's a bit of a bit of an odd situation because you have to, um, um, I think you have to imagine this being drawn on a kind of three-dimensional system. So I could call, yeah, I guess I, I could. I could call this x-axis uh, and let's say t is perpendicular upward out of the surface, then y-axis should look something like this. Oh, I guess those plane edges are kind of parallel to the axis. So x, y, z, that's sort of how it appears. So here, um, I guess uh, once again, it's uh, kind of nicer to break down forces into the parallel and the perpendicular component. And you know, it's perfectly fine to do that. But let me just use this to illustrate what the lever arm looks like. Um, as before, you extend the force into a line of force. And from this origin, I try to drop down a perpendicular uh, uh, direction. Um, and I hope I'm drawing this right. I hope uh, in the perspective view, this makes sense. So this is, appears perpendicular <laughs> and uh, this is my lever arm. And similar here, I extend this uh, force vector into a line. Then I can see, starting from this axis of rotation, I can drop down a perpendicular line segment here. Okay, okay I think that's uh, kind of all the illustrations of locating lever arm.